Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Gooey's Dungeon Dive, the podcast where I, Gooey, rank every dungeon in the Legend of Zelda series. We're continuing through Link's Awakening as we take on Level 4, Angler's Tunnel. Now, back when we completed Key Cavern, our old pal, the Owl, finds us, and he says to us, how many instruments have you gotten so far? When you play the instruments in front of the egg, the windfish will wake and you will leave the island. Now you must hasten to the Yarna Desert. The dark, monstrous inhabitants of the sand will show you the way. So our next destination here is clear, uh, but a large sleeping walrus blocks the path to the desert. But one of the residents in the nearby animal village seems to think that Marin could get the walrus to awaken and move out of the way. So we gotta go find Marin down on the beach of Toronbo Shores, and she asks us to sit and talk with her. Uh, maybe this is our big chance. <laughs> uh, this scene is both sweet and somewhat foreshadowing here. Marin tells us, Terran says there is nothing beyond the sea but I believe there must be something over there. When I discovered you, Link, my heart skipped a beat. I thought this person has come to give us a message. If I was a seagull, I would fly as far as I could. I would fly to faraway places and sing for many people. If I wish to the windfish, I wonder if my dream will come true. Marin then lets it slip. I want to know everything about you. <laughs> but in the awkward moment, it's revealed that she is needed by the walrus. <laughs> and with that, we go, and she sings a song that we may have heard many times called Ballad of the Windfish. And uh, the walrus, he wakes up, he's loving it. And with that, we are able to continue on our path. In the desert, we encounter this giant landmola who exclaims, Annoyance! You are only getting in the way! Now, after dealing with this guy in a little fight, we get the angler key, which we can take to the foreshadowed waterfall. And as the owl directs us, we can jump from the mountain above as we're able to enter Angler's Tunnel. Quite a journey to get here, but in the dungeon proper, the clear, the most noticeable clear thing going on here is that this is our second water themed dungeon in the series. And not just because we had this waterfall entrance and the giant fish head. What a great scene that is. Um, but there's also rooms just filled with water and some that are too deep to swim in. Much like the Swamp Palace in A Link to the Past, a lot of the rooms are calling with like water tech tights, you know, stuff like that. And even in the remake, they make the walls w look really uh, like, a, like a dank cave with some moss growing on the top. It was a nice reimagining. And the music even has like this strange like a uh, trickling <laughs> quality to it and the remake enhances it even further and it gives it, it has like a more like mysterious aquatic vibe to it i i do really like that version of the song a lot and of course uh if you look at the map it's sort of shaped like uh, looking at a fish straight on almost. <laughs> um, it took me a minute to realize that, but, uh, it does, it does actually look like that. Just Google fish front view. I know this is a video, but I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> um, once again, the layout of this dungeon is actually somewhat simple. You know, it's a, it's a Game Boy game we're talking about here, but they do a lot with it to make it seem a bit more complex and confusing than it really is. Uh, similar to Bottle Grotto, you can, I mean, similar to a lot of the dungeons so far really, is you can find like the map, the compass, and the stone beak all pretty much right away in any sort of order. And the form of progression you have here in the beginning is, is somewhat linear. There's like three rooms in a row where you have to use a key to progress, but all the keys can be found before the room like in, in, in any sort of order again there's there's sort of a natural 
order that I think a lot of people at least get a couple of them in a in a certain order. But still, it's there's not a lot of there's not like options to you. If you find one and go use the key, you're still gonna have to come back. You know, similar to like the key blocks at the end of Key Cavern. Running through the first portion of this part of the dungeon, though, is this raised platform that teases basically uh, the second portion of the whole dungeon and it, it even like teases the chest containing the nightmare key so you sort of have you're sort of getting the layout of the whole dungeon kind of shown to you early on which is pretty cool now once you get to the second area there's not actually much we can really do here uh, because every room uh, contains water that is now too deep to go beyond in the, you know, in the first portion of the dungeon, water was mostly kind of an annoyance, but now it's like a hard obstacle. Um, right away, we see a locked door, uh, and in that same room, there are some zoles that when we kill them, a key drops into a hole in the room, which is such a tease. <laughs> you can even f go find, you're able to pretty much find where the key falls right away in an underground passage, but it falls into some deep water, so we can't get it. We sort of take a little tour of all the locations we really can't get to, <laughs> um, including the entrance to the nightmare chamber, because of because of all the deep water. You know, we we just keep seeing room after room of like, oh, I can't get over there, I can't get over there. And then we finally come to a chest, which could be the key we need to progress, but no, it's another troll's old chest. I love that bit of like, finally something. And no, it's it's not that. But then just in the room beyond, we can get the key we need. <laughs> so this this part's extremely linear in some sense, uh, because the, the key was the only really thing we could get, and now we can only spend it in one place. But it, it is cool that we kind of got this like little rundown of you know the whole dungeon basically. So now we backtrack and we can take on the mini boss who's called Q Ball. <laughs> Or maybe Hydrosaur? I don't know. I, I I saw mixed things on uh, online now, I, but I've always known him as Q-Ball, so that's what I'm gonna stick with for this for this time. But it's like a giant headed, I don't know, Tektite or Octorok thing. I always used to think he was set, he was just a head, like a skull head. But now I look and see the things on the front on his sprite are like the little uh, tentacles or like legs or whatever. But um, yeah, he's in this tight corridor. Uh, and you have to, you can't hit him from the front, and you have to jump over him and slash him from behind. Uh, it's 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 a fun fight. I think it is a great mini boss fight. Um, and after defeating him, we're you know a couple rooms away. We basically get the access to the flippers, which is the dungeon item, and it allows us to swim in deep water. Now, a great aspect I like about this is that we've basically now seen pretty much every room there is to see in the dungeon but we were previously held back by the water now, i don't think using the flippers is particularly fun i think some people rank dungeon items on how like fun they are which is like why i like the pegasus boots or the the feather but uh compared to like being able to swim or like lift things with this dungeon and bottle grotto but i think it's cool the way they incorporate it here where it's we've seen everywhere we need to go we've seen all the places we've been held back by but now the whole dungeon is fair game to us and uh and there's not much it left in terms of actual progression but exploring the open dungeon at this point feels more non-linear than it is like there's there's a bunch of chests we saw and now it's a matter of like going and finding and opening them now some and some of them are just rupees and goodies so that's pretty cool because it's like you you kind of have to use your your compass your spatial awareness your memory of the dungeon to go find all the stuff you remembered seeing like uh, you could at this point you could start heading to the path to the nightmare nightmares chamber but it's actually blocked off by a key block um, which is the key <laughs> we were originally teased by outside of cue balls chamber so now you know we can go back to that room uh, if we hadn't found it already, you know, and go drop in the water and get the key in the in in the water and boom, no problem. So, you know, we could take the path to the nightmare chamber at this point, but there's still a we still need the nightmare key, 
which is hidden by a secret path. In our room earlier on that we were teased with, there are these kind of five floor tiles that the puzzle is you have to just press them in the correct order to open the path. And there's an owl statue that kind of gives, in a different room actually, that gives you a hint about this other room with the ident identical tile pattern set that uh, teaches you the proper order. Now this this is something you could probably figure out on your own, and I, I like that. I like the stone beak use as kind of an optional hint uh, if, if you need it. Um, you know, you memorize the pattern, you take it to the other room. You could also just figure it out yourself in, in that very room. You could kind of power your way through. It's, you know, it's kind of a simple puzzle. But boom, that'll give you the path, and gives us the path to the nightmare key, which uh, drops us back off on a higher ledge, and there's a little place to drop down that basically goes right to that path to the nightmare's lair. And I, I love this path because it's just another, it's another underwater location, but uh, they still slip in the Mario theme with the cheap cheeps down there. So I think that's cool that even though we have, you know, we found a way to transfer the Mario into the, uh, the underwater aesthetic. So good stuff there. Now the final fight, the, the nightmare here is found deep underwater and it is, of course, the angler fish. This guy he comes out and he's shouting at us. He says, bloop, bloop, glub, glub, food, bloop, glub, or something like that. Truly terrifying. Um, honestly, this guy is a joke. Uh, he's kind of a joke in the series, especially in the DX version. I don't think you even have to move when you fight him. You just have to hit him with your sword. They didn't really think of like What's a fun way to use the flippers here? You're just swimming. But, uh, there's, I mean, I think you can, I don't know if you can shoot him too, with the bow and arrow if you have that. But nonetheless, even in the DX version, you know, you'll, you'll be swimming around a little bit more, but he's not harder. I've sort of, I've sort of grown attached to him for how, like, kind of funny and pathetic he is. Uh, but I have listed him before in videos as, like, one of the worst bosses in the series so whatever you know they can't all be winners i guess after we defeat him we get the surf harp a beautiful tune plays we're consumed in the white light and we see the words bay your road goes into the bay this dungeon i was surprised i was impressed by it i'm gonna bring up the ranking here and i got us okay hi as I was making this video, this was shooting all over my list. On the surface level, I thought, okay, it's similar to like, I don't know, it's it's similar to like, nah, not Bottle Grotto. It's just like, it is pretty simple, like I said. But then I was like looking at all the intricacies and I was like, I do kind of appreciate that. And it was, it was growing. I had it above Bottle Grotto. I had it in the, in the top 20 top 15 area and I was like no this is actually pretty neat the way they do it and then I so it was close it was approaching the top 10 it was in the top 10 and then I was thinking okay I, th I think I do I like it better than tail cave I don't think I like it more than key cavern so I was like okay it can fall somewhere in here right and I was struggling because I, I then it really became to me a Swamp Palace versus Angler's Tunnel debate. Now, the Swamp Palace is a is a linear puzzle theme dungeon, navigational puzzle theme with the crystal switch, the full of the the black switches, and it's it's not complicated, but it is it is clever, and it does have that great water use. Angler's Tunnel, it. <laughs> It, I just love that aspect of you get the now you get have the ability to go anywhere in the dungeon and that's so cool uh, after you've kind of seen it all and I do love that backtracking element though you know the act of swimming isn't necessarily as fun um, I don't like I, I don't really view like the hook shot in swamp palace really as like a like that's not like the make or break for that dungeon either so it's not even down to comparing uh, 
the items or like the boss and swamp palace is definitely a little better but still it's still not one of the better ones but it's still good so you can't really do a one-to-one -one comparison here with the water theme though i do think you know they're both they're both actually very fairly simplistic you know um but i went i went uh going with swamp palace higher um though i you know, there was there was moments where I thought Angler's Tunnel could be the the best Link's Awakening dungeon so far. Uh, it it is a great in terms of the progression. It is uh, great in terms of the navigation is simpler, but it feels bigger and more complex, and it is bigger. And so, Link's Awakening is knocking it out of the park so far, I think, with the progression. Even though I liked, say, the second dungeon better than the first, and the, uh, the, or the first dungeon better than the second, I liked the third dungeon better than the fourth, I still think the progression has begin, been good, and this is a solid set of dungeons. So, right now, Angler's Tunnel, I think I'll, ke I'll keep it at number seven. And things are looking good for Link's Awakening, because... I, yeah, I think what we have coming up is pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, Catfish's Maw is what's coming next week, so everyone uh, stick around for that. I hope, you, hope you've been enjoying these so far. I've really been enjoying Link's Awakening, uh, revisiting one of my favorite games. I hope you've been enjoying some of the story that I've been including uh, in the beginning, I, d I don't want to get into a whole like story analysis or anything, um, but I do love along with the dungeons. I think it's worth just mentioning some of these simple yet poetic and beautiful story elements of the game, and I'm trying to include, you know, as much to kind of tell the arc that I think is uh, important there. So hope you've been enjoying that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.